I didn't have it, you dumbass! Yeah, hydration is garbage. I really suggest all all one of you idiots to uninstall. Ah, nice try, guys. Happy face. That's a garbage ass suck. I hate you. Sinatra was once known as one of the most toxic players in Overwatch. People didn't talk about his incredible mechanical skill or his deep hero pool. They only talked about how much it sucked to play with him. And who could blame them? He did more damage to his teammates than his opponents. <laughs> I was like just a dumb kid back then, like when I was 16, I was just always mad and toxic. But these days, people have different things to say about Sinatra. He's NA's hero. For your 2019 Overwatch League MVP, Sinatra. He's a role model. Working on myself, developing like my personality, and just becoming a better person in general. He's the best Overwatch player in the world. Just a little bit of HP, he tried to quickly duck behind a killer. That Manala Bayonet is five people! It's time for Sinatra, oh. baby! In he goes with the Dragon Blade! Already three! Oh, 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 oh. Got himself four! So, how did Sinatra go from the most toxic person in Overwatch to the best player in the game in the span of just one year? I've, I've grown a lot. Uh, last season I was, you know, a pretty, pretty toxic, you know, ego selfish kid. Well, as a 16 year old aspiring pro, Sinatra loved to shit talk other players. To the point where it became the first thing you thought of when you heard his name. Ah, nice try guys, happy face. <laughs> I'm Rizzo, I can You're Rizzo. garbage. I'm Rizzo, Muma. What do you mean? I just used it and go roll by this in. <laughs> Where was all this aggression coming from? Maybe it was from his early attempts playing baseball. I was like JV in high school, like freshman, sophomore year, so I knew I wasn't going anywhere, but like, um, no, I knew I just wasn't doing anything with baseball, but it was fun. Maybe he felt pressure to perform, to become the best. Or maybe he was just a teenager being a teenager. <laughs> Whatever the reason, Sinatra's toxicity wasn't doing his reputation in the Overwatch community any favors. Dude, I really can't take this. Dude, this tilts me the most, especially when the worst player in Overwatch League tries to fucking pretend like he's good at the game or something, and then just starts throwing the game because he doesn't get what he wants. Anytime his name was mentioned online, people immediately started talking about how he had a bad attitude, how he harassed other players, and how, well, how he was just a dick. Yeah, I know, I don't know why you're throwing. like. You're saying it yourself. I don't know why, dude. Oh, dude why? <laughs> why did you do this? You're literally he wasn't throwing even throwing. Get a response out of me. Demi, he I literally know, wasn't throwing. The most immature fucking shit you could do. Sinatra got his start playing CSGO, but the release of Overwatch in 2016 was life changing for him. It was the game that finally gave him the opportunity to go pro. And sure, his parents were worried, but they came around. Um, at first, I waited till Christmas time actually, uh, cause I wanted, <laughs> yeah, to make it easier. <laughs> yeah, I wanted them to be more willing, you know. Sinatra quickly signed with Selfless, and though the team didn't pick up any huge victories, his mechanical skills did put him on a lot of other teams' radars. I'm going to point now. I'm on there, Roadhog right? on point. Right? He's in open space. His name's Space. I'm on him. I'm on him. <laughs> This carry is disgusting, I don't wanna hear it. Sinatra showed off more of the mechanical skills that made him famous while playing for Team USA at the 2017 Overwatch World Cup. But he was quickly smacked down by Team South Korea, a loss that Sinatra felt personally responsible for. I expected to do really well against Korea, but honestly, I've never played a Korean before that, so I didn't know how they played, and then I just played way too aggressive, and I, I didn't adjust, so I just did really poorly. So yeah, I'm pretty sure we lost because I didn't do well. Despite that, there were two teams fighting over Sinatra heading into the first season of the Overwatch League, the London Spitfire and the San Francisco Shock. Sinatra ended up choosing the Shock, but there was just one problem. He was too young to play at just 17 years old. Yo, what's up guys, Sinatra here. Just wanna say that I'm super stoked to be representing San Francisco in the Overwatch League. We're stacked, we're nutty, let's go. And then after he signed, his salary leaked, $150,000 a year. That was triple the league's minimum salary, and though some people started calling him Mr. 150K, other people started calling him overpaid. Honestly, it kind of sucks because I'm like the only player in Overwatch League that has the league salary, and everyone thinks like that I have the biggest salary in Overwatch League, which I don't. So like before I came into the Overwatch League, everyone had an unreal expectation of me, like oh he's gonna come in and just one v six everybody and carry the team and go like twenty and zero. So uh, I think it just put me at like a disadvantage. It got me really nervous. Like I felt like I had to perform. Sinatra sat on the sidelines. 
Unable to prove that he wasn't overpaid. Unable to prove that he wasn't the toxic little shit everyone thought he was. And after four long months, Sinatra finally made his debut. He just turned 18 on Saturday. He's finally old enough to play in the Overwatch League. There he is, the man himself. Now the first time we get to see him, almost halfway through the entire season. Sinatra's first season didn't go too well for him. Two players for the Florida Mayhem on the point. Madison self-destruct, finds sleepy Sinatra down. Logic finds Nobi with a poison mine of all things. What a way to finish things off. Sinatra knocked off the edge, it looked like. And that's going to be Moth and Super going down now. Shock, we're so close, but they are in big trouble now. Some people still thought he was overpaid. Some people still thought he was toxic. But whatever the reason was, the haters still went to town. I like read a lot of like Reddit and Twitter and all that, like the articles about me, and everyone would just like flame me. So, and that like broke my mental actually last season. Despite being a superstar in solo queue, Sinatra just couldn't pull off a win for his team. Eventually, Sinatra realized that his individual skill wasn't enough that all that big talk and toxicity wasn't leading to victory. Season one for me, honestly, was like, um, it was like a building block for season two, because I, I wanted to, to learn a lot about Overwatch League and what it's about and like gain confidence and not always be like nervous on stage. So going into season two, Sinatra tried to turn everything around. I'm known for being toxic, just not a good person, but a good player. So I think it's just working on myself, developing like my personality and just becoming a better person in general. Moving into a house with the rest of his teammates forced Sinatra to get closer with them, making their communication better in game. And his new coach, Krusty, taught him how to play smarter and better as a cohesive unit. This season, uh, I, I gotta give it to my coaching staff. Uh, Krusty, Junkbug, 9K, they really helped me um, just grow as a player, an individual, a teammate, and a leader. And the changes worked. Well, here comes Sinatra. He's gonna leech out of your Mac and, oh, just a casual, another Graviton ready to go. 53 seconds between grabs for Sinatra. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Sinatra gonna be forced to use a meteor strike. Can they find anything? The hold is huge! Sinatra gets a triple kill! They might just turn this one around right now, and they have! Sinatra absolutely massive to play, set up by Smart. The Shock finished Stage 2 of Overwatch League Season 2 without dropping a single map. And then, Sinatra led them to victory in the Stage Finals. The grab from Sinatra comes in, and the Shock have done it! They are your Stage 2 champions! Right when that happened, I just jumped up and started yelling with my team, and then I literally started crying the first, like, five seconds. I don't know how or why. Sinatra was delivering big time. He wasn't just performing mechanically, he was also speaking up on comms, becoming the team's de facto in-game leader. Remember, we can engage, disengage, and then yeah. boot them in with that second bubble. I've become more of a leader, I guess, since season one. I'm always calming now, which is like crazy to me because I never thought I would. Play our game and pummel these kids. Yeah, let's nice. go. Right our left, right our left side, right our left side. Nice! Let's go! Nice! Sinatra could do it all. He wasn't just an amazing Zarya, he was also playing tons of DPS heroes and was dishing out some of the highest hero damage in the league. Simply put, he was one of the best players in the game. Sinatra's tearing it up right now, I mean. The guy is a phenomenal freak of nature. Just a little bit of HP, he tried to quickly duck behind a pillar. That vanilla bayonet, it's five people! It's time for Sinatra, oh. baby! In he goes with the Dragon Blade, already three! Oh, 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 oh. Got himself four! But Sinatra's true test came in the Season 2 Overwatch League Grand Finals, where he had to face off against the Vancouver Titans. The Titans were the only team that could consistently push the Shock to their limits, and their clash was going to be legendary. Shock are playing so aggressively, but Sinatra already has his Meteor Strike in the whole combo. It's beautiful! You can't answer much more than that, Matt. Sinatra goes in early. Look at the disruption in the back line. Meteor Strike. He gets rid of the Supercharger and Slime is down. Shock won, but 
but all eyes were on Sinatra. His incredible performance all year long reached its peak in stage four and the finals. And in the end, he lifted the coveted MVP trophy. This has been one of my biggest goals uh, coming into the season. Uh, ever since I've seen Jonak win it, it's been my biggest goal. So I'm just really happy and grateful right now. But Sinatra wasn't ready to stop at just one MVP title. He was determined to prove to whatever haters that were left that he was the best player in the world. And the place to do it was the 2019 Overwatch World Cup, the same tournament where he disappointed himself just two years before. I think we have it now is just a player experience, maybe like being on stage and like Overwatch League stage um, helped us a lot with like nerves and stuff. So I, I don't know what happened those first two years, maybe like nerves got to us or, or something. Cause like we, we didn't do well on stage at all. Um, and we knew we were a good team. First, Sinatra got his revenge by beating Team South Korea. Sinatra does work on Manu, he's down. Meteor Strike gets the kill, but Osa was too low and didn't have the chance to fade away. Sinatra is here again. This guy is a maniac. Sinatra has time to select his next target, but he runs into a fortified Orisa first. It doesn't matter. He's body blocking, he's punching, he's rope doping. Whatever it takes, Sinatra's got what you need. I need to help calm these jitters, they're close, but they're not there yet. Corey tries to go in, that's two, that's three! Oh, and do it four for Corey! And the USA sound out the curtain call, and South Korea now have no chance for the first time in Overwatch history. They will be going home without the gold! And then came China. Supercharger is in play currently, the USA are dealing big damage! Evil Tal is down, Sinatra punches Jinnu in the next Tuesday. And the USA, they've done it. Gooseway backs up behind his shield, but Sinatra knocks him away from it. That's instant death for the Orisa. Another Gravitic Flux, that was quick. Space, I see you. The card, it gets there. One more step towards glory. Meteor Strike, perfect. Q and Evil Tal plus Gooseway. A brace of kills for the young superstar. Eileen is missing, the seconds dwindle away, Evil Tal tried, but it's not enough. Finally, after four years, three years of heartbreak, for the very first time, the United States are your Overwatch World Cup champions. At the end of the day, Team USA stood victorious, and Sinatra, of course, was instrumental in that victory, earning himself yet another MVP trophy. It means the world to me, obviously, but definitely got to give it up to my team. Uh, if it weren't for them, I I'd literally be nothing. Co I think Corey should have got MVP, uh, personally. Big shout out to Corey, he popped off. Um, but yeah, just happy. Whether it was his pregame rituals. Before we go to the arena, I always like to have slippers on. And like while we're at the arena practicing, that I, I still have my slippers on. But when we're getting ready for the match, that's when I put my sneakers on. And it's the same sneakers. His commitment to being a better person and a better player. Don't kill them with kindness, kill them with success, or torture them with success. So, I don't know. I always thought about that quote and like just kept my head down and grinded hard to like just be the best I can be. Or the love and support of his teammates, friends, and family. The second I got like announced for like Shock and like Team USA, I don't know, they're just all really hyped for me typing and all that stuff. And I talk to them a lot too, and they're really, really happy for me. And when I go back home, like they're always really excited for me, so. In one short year, Sinatra overcame his personal demons and became the best player in the world. Are you the best player in the world? Um, yeah. Yes! There you have it! Just wait for the knock, Matt. Wait for the knock! I am the one who knocks. Denmark, you have born and raised on playgrounds where Dan spent most of his days. I'm Denmark playgrounds. Fucked up in the corner. That's gonna be an end board, so no. thank you. Thank you.